Welcome to uh, Summit County's Commissioner's Corner for February yep. of 2020. Uh, I'm uh, Scott Vargo, your uh, facilitator, moderator, host, uh, and I'm joined by Thomas Davidson, Elizabeth Lawrence, and Karen Stiegelmeyer, all of your county commissioners. So uh, we're going to start off because um, it is snowy, like in the photos behind us, uh, but it has been snowing quite a bit uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks, it feels like. My back is a little sore uh, from shoveling out. Um, so uh, we want to talk about uh, snow plowing, winter driving, um, messaging, all of those kinds of things. So who wants to, who wants to start? Well, I'll just start with my mantra, which is snow tires. Um, it's really cheap insurance to get some good snow tires even this late in the season i did have to pay for a tow yesterday um oh no and and i have good snow tires but i have a terrible driveway um, <laughs> <laughs> and so the tow the cost of the tow the cost of your insurance going up the cost of citations the cost of a collision and the damage it could do to you and your friends um, good snow tires are cheap. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> good way to look at it. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, and certainly uh, lots of uh, road closures and those sorts of things that have been going on over the course of the last few weeks. And so having all those other supplies within your car and washer fluid, all those kinds of things, make sure you've got your, yourselves properly equipped when you get out onto the road. Elizabeth, you wanted to give a shout out yeah. to all the snow plow drivers. So in just community. a huge thank you to our plow drivers across mm -hmm. the county Ooh, and yeah. all of our towns. I mean, they've had such a big job and we've been getting these massive storms during busy holiday weekends and they've just done an excellent job. So really thanks to them because it's a lot of work, but also encourage everyone to be patient because they have a lot of snow to then get out of these parking lots and side streets and all that. So yeah. they're working hard to do that and a good reminder you told people to keep their car socked um, which is great um, I did have some water in my car that then froze <laughs> you're supposed to carry water yeah. that's what our yeah. emergency manager is. <laughs> but I need some that doesn't freeze but a anyhow, thermos. yeah maybe in a thermos I don't know but it's, anyhow um, it's a good time for people to sign up for SC alert yep. if you haven't done it yep you'll get those texts Dillon Dam Road is closed Dillon Dam Road is reopened you know mm -hmm. things like that but it's really important information that can make everyone's life easier if you don't have to get out or if you are getting out you mm -hmm. can know which route you can take Yep. Yeah. Certainly uh, to tack on to SC Alert, the other messages you'll get, uh, which are sort of driven or generated by our transit folks uh, at the summit stage, who also shout out to them for driving uh, back and forth to Park County and Le uh, Lake County uh, and all around Summit County throughout all of these storms as well. They may be slow. Uh, they may not get there quite at, as the scheduled time, but that uh, is, uh, I guess, to be expected in these kinds of conditions. Right. But they will also send out notifications when there are big traffic backups and things like that because they're sort of our eyes on the road. And so, uh, again, SC Alert uh, will get you some good information. Um, just one more thing. There's a, there's a reason why we have rules about not parking along county roadways during the wintertime. <laughs> because uh, if you park your car along a roadway, it makes it really hard for our plows to get the snow off of it. So one more ask of you all is please don't park your cars on the county rights of way because uh, it's really hard to remove the snow if the car is parked there. And so, if, yeah, if you have neighbors that are doing that, that really aren't neighbors, they're Vacation renters, mm -hmm. um, vacationers, good reminder, we do have a hotline for <laughs> yes. all short terminals in the county, and so you can call that short terminal hotline if you do have those problems. Yeah. We know we have locals that are living next to vacation rentals, and you know our locals are probably following the rules, but sometimes people from out of town don't understand those county roads um, need to get plowed and yeah. the car is in the way. Yeah, good and, point. And they're likely not going to get that car out of there anytime soon. If they did leave it there, they're still going to get <laughs> they plowed just plow in. around. <laughs> so, um, all right, uh, let's talk. Continue talking about some road stuff. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about some CDOT uh, project updates, some things that are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked for a number of years now about the GAP project, and so who wants to? Uh, jump in on uh, the GAP project. I can cover GAP. And sure. Yeah, we can split these up. So GAP project is that area between um, the hospital and Frisco where we redid it um, the past couple of years, took out the curve that was very sharp and added in the bridges and it really redid that whole area. Um, 
But if you notice, you go past the hospitals, you're coming into Frisco, and it narrows right back down again to one lane. And so that's caused a lot of issues. Um, frankly, it just wasn't funded, and now it is. And so that project is going to start this summer, mm -hmm. 2021. And so um, this year we'll be staging, which will be in town in Frisco. Um, they'll do a lot of <coughs> utility work. There will be a new underpass, pretty much from the area of the Frisco Adventure Park. Is that where you would say the underpass yeah. is? And, to go over so people can cross back and forth there. Yeah. You know, it's not often that you see, but sometimes you do see people trying to cross the highway right there, yeah. which is really dangerous. And yeah. I've noticed when I've watched it, I've even seen kids try to get across from the summit stage stop, et cetera, and get over there. And so um, that will be going on this summer. And then next summer of 2021 will be the new roundabout and additional lanes. Yeah. And so it's a two year project. Yeah. Two roundabouts, right? Two roundabouts. Two roundabouts, that's yep. right. Yeah. And so we do tell people to expect um, this is not going to be easy. Um, we do have a short season for building roads. Construction, I've noticed, throughout the county has kind of expanded into the winter months. People yeah. just keep it going. But when it comes to actual road work, it's really shortened to those months that they can get out there and do it. Yep. You want the asphalt to last, you can't do it in the middle of the winter, unfortunately. That's right. So it is going to yeah. be impactful. That will start, you think, May? Yeah. Springtime, yeah. uh, they'll get started on work on that. And, and as you said, the underpass, the underpass will be um, connecting in the county commons and the adventure park. It'll be uh, just a short walk from where the summit stage bus currently drops off right. the county commons, which a lot of those folks that are going to the tubing hill or whatever else with lots of little kids, uh, historically they've been sort of not sure where to go and they get yeah. dropped off on the bus on a map. It looks like you're really close. Uh, but if you got to walk down the highway, it's uh, it's a dangerous endeavor. Right. So yeah. uh, so that'll be great to have that as a new amenity uh, with that road project. The Frisco Adventure Park continues to get busier and yeah. busier. And I know they have expanded plans there yeah. um, that their council's looking at. And so this will really be a good amenity in the next yeah. few years. Yep. That absolutely, right. Right. absolutely. Uh, let's see, next thing we wanted to chat about was uh, exit 203. So there's a significant study going on, uh, ongoing with CDOT, the town of Frisco, and the county uh, that funded that study. And it's about how do we improve the uh, activity at the interchange at exit 203. Uh, we know that there's some development on the horizon there with Lake Hill and, and other things. And so we know that that interchange is sort of at capacity already. We've seen lots of backup issues onto I-70 um, going into Frisco. And so, Thomas, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with that and the flaggers that have been out on the bridge? So what we're trying to do with CDOT is figure out if um, we can improve the level of service that that roundabout there by the entrance to Guyberson would provide for people that are getting off of the interstate and headed into Frisco and on to Breckenridge, right? And uh, the, the idea is that you could actually improve the flow of traffic coming off of the interstate um, around that roundabout over the bridge into Frisco if you were to control the vehicles that are coming out of Frisco and into the roundabout. And so that's the study that's going on right now. Um, and that would be something that's relatively affordable that um, CDOT uh, has agreed with local leaders could, could possibly work. So that's the study. We know that right now we've got lots of safety issues with people backing up onto lanes of the interstate um, trying to get off at exit 203. And then in addition to that, I think the town of Silverthorne is working with CDOT trying to improve the uh, timing of the signalization of all of the lights there on the Blue River Parkway. Um, and so, yeah, you just have to be relentless with an entity as big as CDOT. But, you know, thankfully, we've got good relationships. We've identified these things that could incrementally improve service, and uh, we're all pursuing them. Yeah. And there are a couple of other uh, projects, a uh, uh, project that, that the three of you advocated for strongly and that we've continued to push with CDOT on is a, a variable message sign. Uh, on your approach towards Frisco from Silverthorne on I-70, just to advise folks to be cautious that the traffic may in fact be backing up right. from that exit onto I-70 
into the drive lane. And so that's a that's a scary uh, situation. And so that signage is out there now. Some, some good news that was confirmed recently is that um, CDOT has um, approvals for improving uh, the lanes between exit 203 and exit 205 on the interstate itself. And is that going to start in 21? 2022. 22. So that is the aux lanes that will go from Frisco eastbound to Silverthorne. So there will be a continuous lane that will go all the way, similar to the lane that coming out of Silverthorne towards Frisco goes all the way up to the top of the hill. Yeah. This will now go from the Silverthorne eight or the Frisco exit down to the Silverthorne exit continuously. So that will be a nice addition as well. Yeah. And they'll do some repair work on the bridge. Uh, that is in desperate need of, right. uh, of some work there as well. So I think people know this generally, <laughs> but you know, CDOT is grossly underfunded in this state for all of its um, transportation needs. Um, nevertheless, we locally, all of the towns in the county together, work very hard to watch uh, the CDOT um, process, the funding process for improvements. And um, uh, yeah, we're making some progress with those efforts. Okay. And, one and we have, project. Uh, we have advocated for a long time uh, for these intersections um, and we've been lucky or unlucky because we have more and more traffic. Yeah. CDOT really sees these as serious safety issues yeah. and especially that as you're coming up where that variable mesh sign is now from Silverthorne to Frisco, it's backing up more and more and it's really dangerous because you can get to the top of the hill and suddenly the traffic is right there. Yep. And so I've been staying to the left yeah. until I get over that hill lately because yeah. it is really an accident waiting to happen. Yep, absolutely, that's a scary situation. Uh, and again, CDOT um, has taken notice and, and again, uh, kudos to you guys for uh, continuing to put the pressure on with regards to those things. The, uh, the last one uh, that we want to talk about CDOT related is the HAZMAT uh, study uh, related to the Eisenhower Johnson tunnels. And so there has been a, a, a push or an investigation into having hazardous material vehicles, trucks, uh, think of a gas tanker truck, something along those lines, going through the tunnel rather than going over Loveland Pass and Highway 6. Um, and there's been a, there was a study bill that was approved and that study um, and task force activity is now uh, going on. We've just had the first meeting Karen, I think you uh, and maybe Elizabeth both were at that meeting. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? I was at the previous meeting, but oh, okay. I missed the last one. Okay. And so, yeah, we've, we've had quite a few meetings mm -hmm. on this issue because there are people um, in the Keystone area who would really like to see uh, traffic going through the tunnel. The problem is that the, the fire suppression system there was put in and people thought that it was a higher capacity than it is. There really isn't anything out there that can put out a gasoline truck fire. Mm -hmm. And what they've been able to do is put out small vehicle fires, that's it. Um, so there's a lot of concern about the traffic and closing down for months or years at a time. Uh, could be very <laughs> uh, dangerous to our entire economy. So there's a lot going on and, and we know that there are safety improvements that could help both the tunnel and Loveland, mm -hmm. um, but it yeah. is ongoing right now. Yeah. Elizabeth, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, to that? so just at the um, last stakeholder meeting, uh, I will say Julie McCluskey, our state rep, mm -hmm. put forth that bill, and so it's due by the end of this year in December. I think what really came out of the last meeting is that it's impossible to get that amount of study done by the end of this year because oh. it looks like the consultant wouldn't come on until June and so that six months is probably not uh, not enough time yeah. to really study everything that needs to be looked at and so there's the environmental impact if you have an accident on Loveland Pass and it gets into um, Straight Creek and the drinking water and things, the Stank River, etc. And so what would that do to that area? And obviously people that live in Keystone, um, you know, it's tough having that amount of traffic, but then the reality is if there's an incident in the tunnel, 
like Carm said, it could be months at best, but really it could be years right. before it could be fixed. And so really to look at um, what are some best practices, maybe in other tunnels, mm -hmm. and what we're finding, there might not be other tunnels at this high of an elevation mm -hmm. that has this many challenges either um, with the additional paths. And so they are going to look at some different options there. And um, there's a really a lack of data around yeah. a lot of these different scenarios. So they're going to spend this summer gathering that data. Um, they do allow now um, hazmat vehicles to go through the tunnels at very restricted times. Mm -hmm. And so maybe the top of the hour when Loveland Pass is closed, mm -hmm. etc. And so that's very restricted, but needs they need to look how many vehicles have they let go through mm -hmm. there? When does that happen? When has it been without incident? And so there's a lot of different options here. I would it's not an easy answer. And no. the groups that have been studying this for months, I mean you've been a part of that, it's it's a complicated issue for yeah, sure. Absolutely. One one fascinating statistic we do know is that those two truck ramps as you're coming down are the most used truck ramps in the United States. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and, and again, uh, you, you've got tunnel fire, tunnel explosion, you've got turned over semis on Loveland Pass, you've got turned over accidents with tanker trucks coming down from I-70. Uh, Straight Creek, of course, is the drinking supply for Dillon and Dillon Valley. Uh, Snake River uh, has impacts on a whole lot of things within the Keystone Valley as well. So lots of very complicated issues. So uh, hopefully they take their time with regards to the study overall. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about uh, legislative items at the state level.